there are certain misconceptions people have about ruling by other than what Allah revealed and people they talk about this topic with certain misunderstandings and certain emotion and certain um, excuses for the different rulers and what they are uh, doing today and a lot of it falls based upon um, certain statements about the khawarij that were made where people exaggerate and say that anybody who opposes the rulers must be khawarij and this is wrong and until people they start to exaggerate as well and they say that the verse that this can never be kufr akbar and this is also wrong and they quote certain statements and certain hadith in order to um, defend this you know but in reality what's happening is that they are distorting and changing the original meaning of uh, these statements of the Sahaba uh, and others so we want to look at this ayah I want to look at other ayat as well in fact we don't need this ayah at all to talk about why the rulers are kafir or not so this is another topic inshallah we can talk about that later on but just to highlight some of these shubuhat some of these misconceptions okay shubuhat the misconceptions or misunderstandings, confusions people have in order to really understand this topic, we need to understand what is Tawheed Allah Azza wa Jal. Because our da'wah must be to Tawheed. We cannot be those who are calling to you know, something other than the purest, clearest form of Tawheed. That they want to take away from the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they want to give it to the people and call it Islam. That is not called Islam. At-Tawheed is Ifradullah Tabaraka wa ta'ala fi jami'i huquqih is exclusivity to Almighty Allah in all of His rights, in everything. And Allah's rights include His rububiyya, His being the Lord, His own actions of majesty and being the Lord and of the Creator. He creates us, He guides us, He commands us, He gives life, He takes life, He provides the rizq for us. These are all things belonging to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The one who claims that this is for other than Allah, he is mushrik. Included in this is his own uh, at-tawheed, in his what? Al-khalq wa tadbir That he is the only one who creates, the only one who, who manages and disposes the affairs. That he is the only one as well who provides for us as the rizq and the, uh, you know, in all of these affairs, it belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exclusively. Included in that is at-tawheed al-asma' wa sifat the exclusivity to Allah in all of his names and all of his attributes they belong to him exclusively and there's nothing like him whatsoever nobody shares his attributes okay there is nothing like Allah so when, when we say Allah sees and we say humans see the seeing of Allah is nothing like the seeing of a human being or creation because we are going to see to the end of the room you know barely we can see even better than the animals. Yet Allah sees everything and nothing is hidden from His sight. Nothing can obstruct, obstruct His view. Allah hears and we hear, but our hearing is nothing like the hearing of Allah. Allah hears everything and is not needy for anything. He doesn't need, he doesn't need um, uh, organs like we need organs to hear. You take our eye, we can't see anymore. You take our ear, we, don't, we can't hear anymore. Because we are needy, we are dependent. Allah is not needy for anything. He's not dependent on anything. Allah Ta'ala, when we say that He has a face, He has a hand, He has as well shin and foot, His hand is nothing like our hand. His shin, nothing like our shin. Our mind cannot go to human body when we talk about Allah Ta'ala or any other creation because there's nothing like Allah. This is the Asma wa Sifat. And you have as well His right to Al Ilahiyyah. This is our acts of worship and obedience and following to Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala exclusively. Is our own actions and devotion offered to Allah exclusively? And we cannot offer it to anybody else. Okay. This is all part of our Tawheed to Him. Tawheed, including what? Tawheed al Ta'a, or Tawheed al Ittiba', or Tawheed al Mahabba wal Wala, or Tawheed al Hakimiyya. All this is part of the right of Allah. 
that we worship nobody except for him subhanahu wa ta'ala that we follow nobody but Allah that we obey nobody but Allah that we love nobody but Allah and al hakimiyah has two aspects the aspect of rububiyyah and the aspect of, of uluhiyyah or ilahiyyah part of it is his qadr that Allah he legislates and orders the creation when he says kun fayakun when he says to the things be and it will be he ordered the heavens and the earth to come together whether they like it or dislike it and they obeyed him Allah orders our body our heart to beat even though you don't know you cannot stop it he orders our body to function and to do everything that is being ordered with even though you cannot control it because it's not up to you and on the other hand you have at-tawheed al-hakimiyya at-tashri'iyya the exclusive right of Allah to be the only legislator, to legislate laws for mankind, to dispose and govern all of their affairs. That's what the Quran was revealed for. The Quran was revealed for us to, to, to take it as the arbiter, as the criteria in all of our disputes. To rule and judge only by the Quran. So when we follow any other law instead of Allah's, any other sharia instead of Allah's, any other deen instead of Islam, we disbelieve in Allah. We commit shirk in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah, He is al musharri al mukallif al hakam al adl He is the one who legislates. He is the one who commands al amir He is the one who is the only legislated, only legislator. Alayhi sallallahu bi ahkam al hakimin Is Allah not the best of all the in terms of wisdom and legislation? Is not Allah? Allah is the only one that can legislate laws for us. A human being can never legislate. We have different roles. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creates and therefore He commands. Therefore He legislates. If you're not creator, you cannot be a legislator. Simple like this, Allah ta'ala says, Ala lahu al wal amr. Is it not for Allah the creation and the command? And the verse for this, the reference for this, inshaAllah, I will give you uh, in just one moment. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Surah A'raf, verse 54, Surah 7, verse 54, Allah says that He is the one who created the heavens and the earth. He is the one who created the heavens and the earth. And the moon and the stars. And He governs all, everything under His command. And He said, Is it not for Allah the creation and the command? Tabarakallah Rabbil Alameen, He is the one, blessed is He, the creator of all the heavens and the earth. So Allah, He is Al Khaliq. We are Al Makhluq. Allah is the creator. We are the creation. Allah SWT, He is Al Ilah. Okay. Ay, Al Ma'luh. He is the one who is the, the God that's to be worshipped, to be obeyed, to be followed. And we are the ones who worship Him. Okay. He is Al Ma'bud, the one that is worshipped. We are Al Ibad or Al Abid, the one who worships. Okay, the one who obeys, the one who follows. He is Al Muta'. We are Al Muti'. He is the one who is obeyed. We are the one who obey. Okay, this is Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. We cannot swap the roles. He is Al Musharri, the legislator, and we are the ones who obey His laws. And we implement his laws. He is Al Mukallif, the one who makes us accountable and says, You'll be punished or you'll be rewarded. If you do this, you'll be accounted. He is that, that one, Al Mukallif. Allah does not make accountable any person beyond his own scope. And we are Al Mukallif, the one that will be accounted for our deeds. We must be questioned about our actions. Did it fit within the law of Allah? We don't become the ones who legislate. We are not the ones who, who make the laws. That belongs to Allah SWT. And whenever people they start to try and legislate, is as if they are trying to become the creators. They're acting as if they are the creators instead of Allah SWT. 
They are acting as if they are the creators themselves. And Allah Ta'ala says, he said, is the one who creates similar or equal to the one who does not create? Will you not then think about it, contemplate? And Allah Ta'ala described those people who they take a different legislator instead of Allah. Somebody who tries to say to you, we will make the laws instead of Allah Ta'ala. He describes those people as mushrikeen taking lords instead of Allah. Whenever people they try to make the laws, the one who takes them as their own new legislator, they take lords instead of Allah. Allah says in Surah Tawbah verse 31, Surah 9 verse 31, He says, اِتَّخَذُوا أَحْبَارُهُمْ وَرُحْبَانُهُمْ أَرْبَابًا مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ He said they took their rabbis and their priests as lords instead of Allah. How did they take the rabbis and priests as lords instead of Allah? Did they used to make sujood to them? Did they used to fast for them? Slaughter in their names? What did they do? Hudayb bin Hatim radiallahu anhu He was a companion, he was new revert to Islam, he used to be Christian. He came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam when he was reciting this verse and he said, we never used to worship them, Ya Rasulullah. We never used to worship the rabbis and priests. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said to him, didn't they used to make haram, forbid what Allah made halal? And you used to obey them? Didn't they used to make uh, halal what Allah made haram? And you used to obey them? He said, yes. He said, that is how you used to worship them. So Allah described the one who legislates the laws as the partner with Allah. The one that's been taken as a partner with Allah SWT. And the one who obeyed them in that new legislation, accepted that new legislation from them, he is the mushrik, the one who worships other than Allah. In this ayah, he declared them arbaba min dunillah, lords instead of Allah. In another verse, Allah Taala says, "Am lahum shuraka, shara'u lahum min adini ma lam yatam bihillah." Do they have partners with Allah that legislate for them a deen without permission from Allah? Okay. Do they, do they have partners with Allah that legislate for them a deen, a way of life, without permission from Allah Okay, so this is Surah Shura verse 21, Surah 42 verse 21. When Allah He declares those people who take partners with Allah, legislating instead of Allah. And also Allah says as well, وَلَا تَقُولُوا لِمَا تَسِفُ أَلْسِنَتِكُمُ الْكَذِبِ هَذَا حَلَالُ وَهَذَا حَرَامُ لِتَفْتُرُوا عَلَى اللَّهِ الْكَذِبِ He said, do not say with your lying tongue that this is halal and this is haram. Okay, that you lie about Allah SWT. Okay, why? Why? Because the one who does that, you know, the one who said this is halal, this is haram, he is playing God. He is the one claiming to be Allah. Surah Nahl verse 116, Surah 16 verse 116. So the one who says this is legal, this is illegal, this is lawful, this is unlawful, he is legislating. He is claiming he is Allah. Or is claiming this is from Allah immediately. Because who can legislate except for Allah? The one who says, no, Allah said alcohol is haram, but I say it's halal. And he doesn't attribute it to Allah. But this is worse than the one who says this is from Allah. The one who says this, this man-made law that I made, this is from Allah. And so we're going to implement it. He is kafir. No doubt, like the Jews. But at least he still recognized only Allah legislates. But the one who says, no, I don't care what Allah legislated. I say it's halal. Even if Allah said it's haram. He's even worse. He's even worse. He is the one who's making takdeeb li kalamillah. He's the one who is saying Allah is a liar. Who said to you alcohol is haram? Allah? Who's Allah? I'm the one who says halal or haram. He's even worse than that with the others. He's like Fir'aun, he's like Shaytan. He's the complete you know, Taghut, like the one who makes the Mu'attil, the one who makes Shirk al The one as if he says that Allah has no say in the matter of legislation. I decide what is halal and haram. That is even worse than the one who lies about Allah and says Allah is a legislator and this is what he said and he lies about Allah. Both of them kufar, but neither of them, you know, and neither of them will be saved. But the one who puts aside what Allah says and as if it is nothing, as if it's the saying of any man, and he puts himself forward instead, 
He is a greater kafir than the others as well. So Allah Subhanahu wa Taala said, "Wala taqulu li ma tasifu al sinatikum al kadhib." Hada halal wa hada haram. So don't say with your lying tongue the falsehood, the lying that this is halal and this is haram. Li taftaru ala Allah al kadhib. Lying about inventing a lie against Allah. Inna ladina yaftaruna ala Allah al kadhib. The ones, those who, verily those who lie about Allah, invent a lie about Allah, la yuflihun. They will never be successful. I mean, they will never enter Jannah. So Allah Ta'ala, He affirmed this uh, exclusive right to Allah to be the only legislator. And anybody who claimed that for himself, he will never be accepted. And we want to look at, inshallah, in more detail at some of these verses at a later time, maybe in another lecture, inshallah. Allah Ta'ala also says in Surah al raad Surah 13, Verse 16. Allah so says, I'm just going He says, Say, who is the, he the Lord of the heavens and the earth? Say, Allah. Qul. 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 أم هل تستوي الظلمات والنور أم جعلوا لله شركاء خلقوا كخلقه فتشابه الخلق عليهم قل الله خالق كل شيء وهو وهو الواحد القهار. الله تعالى says. Okay. So when you say Allah, so then say to them. So then why do you take for your own أولياء, your own uh, protectors and the one those that you turn to, those that have no power to bring any benefit or harm. So say, can the blind and the seeing be equal? Is the darkness and the light equal? Or do they believe? Okay, do they actually believe that they, that besides Allah Ta'ala, these things that you are take as your own awliya, those you take your own legislators and your own laws, the one you turn to for, all, to, for, for benefit and harm, do they, do they create like what Allah creates? So that you might have this you know, similarity between the, Allah's creation and their creation? Say Allah is the creator of all things and he is the one Al-Wahid Al-Qahar, he's the one exclusive and the one nobody can overcome him. So the one who is a creator, he, he is the only one that has this right to be Al-Hakim, the legislator, the one that you turn to for love and your support and for your own allegiance. Whenever you turn to somebody else and he's not the creator, how dare you give the rights of Allah Ta'ala to him. In another verse, Allah Ta'ala as well, He said, <coughs> in Surah Yusuf verse 40, Surah Yusuf verse 40, Allah Ta'ala says, In al hukmu illa lillah, amara an la ta'abudu illa iya. He said, no, the right of legislation is only for Allah. And He ordered that you do not worship or you worship only Allah SWT. You only worship Him. That is the true deen, the true firm deen. But most of the people, they don't know. Okay? They don't know. So, Yusuf alayhi salam, he was the one as well from the in, inside the prison, calling his, his people to Tawheed al hakimiyyah to the exclusivity of the legislation for Allah Ta'ala to accept only Allah as the legislator the only one that can decide what is halal or haram what deserves punishment or what deserves reward also there's another verse inshallah important verse we're going to look at and then we're going to look at some of these shubahat Surah An'am verse 121 Surah 6 verse 121 Allah Ta'ala says وَلَا تَأْكُلُوا مِمَّا لَمْ he said, do not eat from that which the name of Allah has not been mentioned. And he said, this is a sin. Okay. This is a sin. The one who eats haram meat, stunned meat, dead meat, the meat that's been um, slaughtered in the name of something else. All of this is sin. Okay, it's only a sin. But the shayateen, they whisper to their own allies from the Jews and Mushrikeen to debate with you about it. To debate with you about what? The law of Allah SWT. 
وَإِنْ أَطَعْتُمُوهُمْ إِنَّكُمْ لَمُشْرِكُونَ And if you obey them, you are the mushrikeen. The one who obeys the man-made laws, replacing the laws of Allah, he is mushrik. Meaning what exactly? Because you need to understand this clearly. The one, Allah said, the one who eats haram meat, he is, he is a sinner. Okay, he is a fasiq. The one who eats haram meat, he is a sinner. But the one who starts to make new laws, replacing the laws of Allah, telling you and debating with you, saying that actually, is not even haram. It's not even illegal. It should be legal. If you accept that law, man-made law from them, and you obey it, meaning, think, meaning what? Thinking that the law for the meat is not what Allah revealed, but is what this man revealed. What this man thinks and debates with me about it. He's on Russian and it's on mine what he thinks it should be. If that's the law which we should obey. And I won't be sinful for, for eating meat. Why? Because so and so man made a law. If that's what he does, then he is mushrik. Then he is committed shirk in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this ayah was revealed about an incident where the mushrikeen, some of the narration said it was the Jews, some of the narration said it was mushrikeen. Okay, from outside of the Jews. They started to debate with the Prophet or with the Muslims, with a group of the Muslims. And they started to say to him that, look, if you slaughter the sheep, who takes the life of the sheep? They said, Allah. And they said, if the sheep dies of his own accord, without you slaughtering it, who takes the life of the sheep? They said, Allah. So they said, how can it be? That what you slaughter with your iron knife is halal. But what Allah slaughtered with his golden knife is haram. So they start to debate with the Muslims like this. And some of the Muslims were even starting to feel convinced. So Allah revealed this ayah. So that Allah decides halal and haram. Allah said if you do eat the meat that has not been slaughtered in the name of Allah, then it's a sin. But if you obey those mushrikeen that debate with you and they start to change the hukum of Allah, and replace it with their own hukum, then and you obey them, you become mushrik. Okay? So there is something called shirk al ta'a, shirk in obedience. When you take a legislator instead of Allah, different than Allah ta'ala. Moreover, Allah ta'ala says, فَلَا وَرَبِّكَ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ حَتَّى يُحَكِّمُوكَ فِي مَا شَجَرَ بَيْنَهُمْ okay? He said that, no, by your Lord, no one of you is a believer until they take you as the only judge in all of their affairs. Okay? The only judge in all of their affairs. ثُمَّ لَا يَجِدُوا فِي أَنفُسِهِمْ حَرْجًا مِمَّا قَضَيْتِ وَيُسَلِّمُ تَسْلِيمًا And they should find in their hearts no hardship whatsoever after that. And they will submit to it fully. And this ayah was revealed about you know, some two people who they disputed. They had a dispute. And they took this dispute to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam And he made, gave a verdict And one of the men said I disagree So the other said, what do you want to do? He said, let us go to Abu Bakr Abu Bakr Siddiq Okay Not to some uh, kafir or mushrik They said, let's go to Abu Bakr Abu Bakr said, you're on the judgment of Rasulullah What do you want from me? He said, I still disagree So what do you want to do? He said, let's go to Umar so they went to Amr and they explained, this is what we did, this is what happened, we had this dispute, Rasulullah said like this, my friend disagreed. So now we come to you. Amr said, really? Rasulullah gave you verdicts and you weren't happy with it, now you come to me. He said, yes. He said, wait here, I'll bring you my verdicts. So he went to his home and he came out with his sword and he killed the first man. And he chased the other one as well. And he went to Rasulullah and complained that he killed so-and-so believer. And even at that time, the Prophet said, I never thought Umar would be brave to kill a mu'min, a believer. So Allah revealed an ayah to say, what? They were not believers. He said, no, by your Lord, they were not believers. Until they accept your judgment in all of their disputes and have no hardship in their hearts anymore. So when somebody comes along and they say to you, he was the hukum of Allah for alcohol, for interest, for riba. Is, is illegal, is haram, nobody should do it. That is not allowed for the, for the people. He said, well, I will put, I disagree with this law. I'll put this aside and I will put my own law that says actually interest is allowed. 
And my own law, that actually, the alcohol is allowed. Gambling is allowed. Adultery is allowed. And it shouldn't be punished. Not the case that somebody says, it's illegal, but I'll close my eyes and you know, I don't see it. I'm not talking about that. This person came into Kufr, doing a Kufr. The one who is replacing the law of Allah and he with another law. Whether he said, this is the law of Allah, okay, like the Jews, or whether he says, I reject the law of Allah and I put a different law instead. Either way, he's kafir. Both of these kafir. Meaning what? He said, no, I appoint courts and don't any one of you dare implement the Sharia of Allah in, the, in these courts. Don't any one of you dare implement the hudud of Allah in these courts. Don't any one of you dare punish somebody for interest in my courts. In fact, if somebody comes to you with a case of interest, loan, based loans, you must order them to pay the interest. You must not use the law of Allah, use my law instead. That person has committed complete kufr akbar. He has left the fold of Islam. He has made himself the legislator instead of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like the one who they said to try to debate with the Muslims and say that actually, you know, whatever Allah said about the meat is haram, the dead meat is haram, I'm telling you it's halal. And if the people accept that, they become kafir. Also, Allah Ta'ala says that verse was Surah 4, verse 65. In Surah 4, verse 60, Allah Ta'ala says, Alam tara ila alladheena yiz'umoona annahum aamanu bima unzila ilayka wa ma unzila min qablik. He said, have you seen those who falsely claim to believe? Allah cursed them already. Allah said that their claim to believe is false. They claim to believe what was revealed to you and what was revealed before you. And then they seek for the judgments, for the laws from Taghut, from other than Allah. Okay? When Allah ordered them to reject the Taghut. وَيُرِيدُ الشَّيْطَانُ and the shaitan wishes to divert them a complete misguidance. And he said, And whenever he said to them, Come on, let's return to what Allah and His Messenger to, uh, taught us, what Allah revealed, and what the Messenger uh, taught us. You see the munafiqeen, they start to become uh, obstinate and they start to become an obstacle in that way. Like what? Whenever somebody says to those rulers, Come on, let's rule by the Sharia. So arrest this man, he's terrorist, he's khawarij. Don't dare let this man speak. Is that not the case? Is not the ulama uh, in prison? Is it not the case that in Saudi Arabia, the prisons are full of ulama? All of them who say, ruling by man, man made laws is kufr akbar. Of course, after that, all you see are left. Some ulama who say, Ah, kufr dunu kufr. We don't see it. We don't see the kufr law. They're the only ones that survive. Everybody else is in prison. Sheikh Walid al Sinani, Sheikh Suleiman al Alwan, Sheikh Nasr al Fahd, Sheikh Ali bin Khudair, Sheikh Hamid al Khalidi, Sheikh Hamid al Ali, Sheikh Nasr al Ali. All of these ulama behind the bars. Why? Why are they the ones in prison? Because they're the ones who say that. The law belongs to Allah Taala, and the one who legislates instead of Allah, he is kafir. The way the, the way the Salaf said, the way Ibn Taymiyyah said, the way Mr. Muhammad Abdul Wahab, Abdul Wahab said, the way the, the ulama of Al Naj said, even the Sheikh of Ibn Baz, Sheikh uh, Muhammad Ibn, Ibn Ibrahim, he said so himself. He read the the economic system uh, laid down by the at that time they didn't have that now you, like the way you have now this full uh, complete Saudi system. But some of the ministers started to propose this economic system. And he read it, he read it, he said, wrote back to them and said, I read, I read almost half of your, your uh, proposals. And the Allah is kufr. It is kufr in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The one who, who follows this is, is disbelief. He said that the Tawheed Hakimiyah and Tawheed Ulahiyah, they are sisters, they are twins. They cannot be separated. He said, the one who rules by man-made laws, who rules by, uh, by man-made laws, and he says, but I believe Allah in, um, in Islam, and I intend by that Islam. He said, like the one who worships the idol and says, I intend by this Allah. It's completely rejected. Those are the great ulama who spoke, and they're the ones suffering because of that. Okay? Because of this. So those rulers, you know, they are not saying we rule by Islam, and this is the law of Allah, but then they're just neglecting in some issues. No. They are laying down complete systems. And even uh, Ibn Uthaymeen in Sharh Usul uh, al Thalatha, he said that the one who replaces the laws of Allah with another law, okay, with another law, 
meaning secular man-made laws, the sets are complete systems of ruling for this. He said, this person has disbelief, it's Kufr Akbar, regardless of what is in his heart. That was what Uthay mean. Okay, and some of the people say that he changed his opinion. Okay, and what they want to say, they want to say that he was Khawarij before and how he became afterwards. No, he was speaking the Haqq based on what all of the ulama they said. So Allah said in this verse, Alam tara illa ladhina yaz'umuna anahum amun. Have you seen those who falsely claim to believe in what was revealed to you and revealed after you? And yet they claim after that, that they, you know, or they seek the judgment of the Taghut instead of Allah. When Allah ordered them to reject it. And if we continue reading as well after this verse and after Surah 4 verse 61, all the way to Surah 4 verse 62. Allah Ta'ala says, فَكَيْفَ إِذَا أَصَابَتْهُمْ مُصِيبَةٌ بِمَا قَدَّمَتْ أَيْدِيهِمْ ثُمَّ جَاءُوكَ يَحْلِفُونَ بِاللَّهِ إِذْ أَرَدْنَا إِنْ أَرَدْنَا إِلَّا إِلَّا إِحْسَانًا وَتَوْفِيقًا He says, and how is it that when the calamity befalls them because of what they did in this world, then they will come to you swearing by Allah, we only intended good. By it, we only intended to bring good and to bring the uh, fairness, and for us to be uh, to have acceptance among us because of it. Meaning, what those munafiqeen and this ayah was revealed about uh, one one so-called Muslim, okay, was obviously a munafiq in hiding, but we don't know the nifaq. We know obviously the apparent. So the apparent was that he was claiming to be Muslim, and a Jew. They disputed. And the Jew said, let us go to Muhammad to solve our dispute. Because he knew that he was just. But the Munafiq said, no, let us go to Ka'b ibn Ashraf. Let us go to so-and-so Kafir for, to solve our dispute. So instead of going wanting to seek the judgment from the book of Allah, he wanted the judgment from a Kafir, Mutawud. So Allah called him Kafir. Allah called him Munafiq. Allah cursed him in this verse. And not because of his evil intention, not because of his heart, no. We judge the apparent. Even this Munafiq, he said that what? I only intended good by it. I didn't intend by it because I hate the Sharia and I love Ka'ab ibn Ashraf. I didn't intend by it that I've you know, uh, made istihlal in my heart or juhud in my heart or that I've rejected Islam in my heart. No, he said that I just did it in order to achieve some goodness, to be good because the Jew, maybe he'd be more accepting of it. No, these are his excuses that he gave and they were rejected. In Tafsir ibn Kathir said that all these excuses are rejected. Wherever you claim my intention, I'm just seeking my rights. My intention, I'm just trying to, uh, to impress the kuffar. All of those excuses are not good enough. The one who takes a legislator, a hakim, the one who's going to judge and to uh, lay down the laws instead of Allah, he is mushrik. The one who takes Allah is the only legislator, he is the muwahid. So this is clear, inshallah, we can um, you know, look to some of these shubhat and why people say what they say. Okay, in particular, the topic of kufr dun kufr. But one other verse, inshallah, I can just bring quickly. <coughs> in Surah al rum verse 4, Allah Ta'ala says that لِلَّهِ الْأَمْرُ مِنْ قَبْلُ وَمِنْ بَعْدُ He said, that the command belongs to Allah from before and after. That's very important because what some people they claim is that the Sharia of Allah is no longer perfect and we need to change it. Okay, and we need to go to a different hukum instead of Allah's. And then, or some people they start to claim that Allah used to be the uh, legislator and now we need to modernize and reform Islam. Rather, the law of Allah Ta'ala belongs to Him exclusively and will never be the remit of any people. And also Allah Ta'ala says, وَمَا اخْتَلَفْتُمْ فِيهِ مِنْ شَيْءٍ فَحُكْمُهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ ذَلِكُمُ اللَّهُ رَبِّي عَلَيْهِ uh, عَلَيْهِ تَوَكَّلْتُ وَإِلَيْهِ أُنِيبُ He said, whatever you differ in, the, the law, the ruling, the hukum, the decision is what Allah exclusively. That is my Lord. I have a tawakkul on Him, I rely upon Him, and to Him I will always turn. Okay. To Him I will always turn. So this is, you know, in summary, obviously these are only maybe uh, a few of the verses about Tawheed Hakimiyyah and, you know, we need to look to, to a lot more to really appreciate it properly, but uh, is enough inshallah for us to look to. But the two main ones that people they start to focus on, on this topic, is the verse in Surah, the verses in Surah Ma'idah. And I'm going to read to you inshallah, and you to bear with me because it may be a little bit boring um, to begin with. Uh, just translating something. Um, these are long verses, but I wanted to go through all of them properly for us to understand, inshallah. 
So starting with <coughs> with Surah uh, Maida, <coughs> verse forty one or forty two. Let me see what which one is better to start with, inshallah. Okay, so <coughs> okay, so from from forty one all the way to fifty, inshallah. Our palates. Now, do something. Ya ayuha al-Rasul, la yahzun kal ladina. يسارعون في الكفر من الذين قالوا آمنا بأفواههم ولم تؤمن قلوبهم. He said, O Messenger, do not let them make you sad or grieved. Those people who are always competing with each other in the kufr. From those who say that we believe with their own tongues or with their mouths, while their, their hearts don't really believe. من الذين هادوا from those who are the Jews. سماعون للكذب سماعون لقوم آخرين. لم يأتوك يحرفون الكلمة من من بعد مواضعه يقولون إن أوتيتم هذا فخذوه وإن لم تؤتوه فحذروه. He said those people who they always listening uh, to all the falsehood from the Jews and eagerly listening to other people without having uh, coming to you and they will distort the meanings of the words uh, taking them out of their own place and they'll say to them if if uh, this is protected for you. If you know, if you get this ruling, then accept it. But if you, if you don't get this ruling, then be be on your guard and reject it. And so and then Allah continued as well, and He said that don't be sad for them because of Allah for um, because if Allah wishes uh, any evil from them uh, or for them to be tempted for the evil, then then you will never be able to stop Him. He will never be able to uh, overcome Allah Taala's will. Okay, and, is, and, if, and they are the ones who Allah has willed and decreed that their hearts will never be, be purified. And they will have in this life all of the uh, misery. Okay, fi dunya khizyun wa lahum fil akhirat adabun azim. And then hereafter they will have a severe punishment. Okay, so all the, from the beginning Allah is talking about the Jews. And the reason why uh, this is because the Jews they had certain disputes among them and they started to say, look, we know, we know what we have in our books, in our revelation. Uh, in terms of the blood money uh, or in terms of the adultery so they said how are we going to deal with it because what they started to have they changed the law of Allah subhanahu wa they made istibdan they started to say um, that instead of everybody having the same law you know, we should have a, a different law because they had a problem that whenever an, a rich person used to commit adultery nobody dared stole them to death but whenever poor people used to commit adultery, they used to stone them to death. So they said, let us change the ruling and have a different punishment that everybody can have. We'll blacken the face and so on. And the other uh, issue that they had was in relation to murder. Whenever somebody from a noble tribe used to commit murder against somebody in a, in a poor tribe, they used to say, we can never have a life for a life. We'll just have blood money. But whenever a poor tribe was to murder somebody from a noble tribe, they said, we must have life for a life. So they, they had this, um, this changing of the laws of Allah Taala. So when some of these incidents happened, and there's different narrations, some of them said it was a case of murder, and some of them said it was a case of, of uh, zina, of adultery, and in fact, you know, the strong opinion is that it was both. They had cases of both. So they started to say to each other, let's go to Muhammad for the dispute, and if he asks, if he orders for us to have blood money, we'll accept it. But if he says life for our life, then we'll reject it. Okay, these are the Jews, the attribute of the Jews. Yeah, or they say, look, if he says stoning, we'll reject it. But if he says don't stone it, then okay, we'll accept the ruling. Because they didn't want to have, have that. So they used to have this. And I'll continue. He said, they used to be always listening for falsehood. And they always used to be um, swallowing all the evil, evil or the bribery. وَإِن تُعْرِضْ عَنْهُمْ فَلَنْ يَضُرُّوكَ شَيْئًا وَإِن حَكَمْتَ فَحْكُمْ بَيْنَهُمْ بِالْقِسْطِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُحِبُّ الْمُقْسِطِينَ And he says, 
And said after that, he said, if they come to you with a dispute, then either judge between them or turn away from them. So at that time, Allah gave them him the choice of either uh, judging between them or just leave them. I don't want to deal with your case. Okay, at that time, that was abrogated later on. He said, you must judge between them, whatever Allah revealed. But he said that if you turn away from them, then they won't be able to harm you in anything. But if you judge between them, judge by the justice. Mean what? By the sharia of Allah. Because Allah loves those who do justice. So then Allah continues in verse number 43. He said, and how is it that they ask you for a judgment when they already have in the Torah? The hukum of Allah is in there. And then they turned away from those judgments. Because verily they are not believers. So Allah has already declared the Jews, they are kuffar. Why? Because they turned away from the hukum of Allah and they want to rule by other rules instead. Then Allah Ta'ala continued, and this is the famous verse. Surah 5 verse 44. إِنَّا أَنزَلْنَا التَّوْرَاتَ فِيهَا هُدًا وَنُورٌ يَحْكُمُ بِهَا النَّبِيُّونَ الَّذِينَ أَسْلَمُوا لِلَّذِينَ هَادُوا وَرَبَّانِيُّونَ وَالْأَحْبَارُ بِمَا اسْتُحْفِذُوا مِنْ كِتَابِ اللَّهِ وكانوا عليه شهداء فلا تخشوا الناس واخشوني ولا تشتروا بآياتي ثمنا قليلا He said and verily we revealed in the we revealed the Torah in it is guidance and light that the prophets used to judge the people who used to believe used to have Islam from the Jews used to judge between the by the by the Torah by the law of Allah and the scholars from among them the rabbis from among them they used to judge by the book of Allah in everything in whatever they preserve from the book of Allah and there used to be uh, witnesses over it so don't fear people but fear me and don't sell my verses for a small price وَمَنْ لَمْ يَحْكُمْ بِمَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهِ فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْكَافِرُونَ and whoever does not rule by whatever Allah revealed they are Al-Kafirun okay before I continue with the rest of the verses after that let me ask you brothers is this ayah talking about Muslim sinners or is he talking about Kuffar Jews? Just from what I've recited already. You tell me brothers, is it talking about Kuffar in hellfire forever, Kufr Akbar? Or was it revealed about some Muslims who committed a sin? This is from the very beginning we know is revealed about Kuffar, about their Kufr in Allah, about their disbelief in Allah that took them out of Islam and in the hellfire forever. About the Jews. If somebody doubts, somebody thinks that the Jews are Muslim, the one who says that the Jew is Muslim, he is kafir. Imam Shafi'i said that whoever doubts the kufr of the Jews and Christians, or he thinks their deen is correct, he is kafir. There is no doubt that the kufr of the Jews is kufr akbar, not kufr dun or kufr, or kufr asghar. In this ayah, in the general meaning of the ayah, it could include many things which are kufr dun or kufr, and that's what the Sahaba spoke about. But the ayah was revealed about kufr akbar, about the Jews. That's what it was revealed about. Not about somebody who commits some sins. So then the verses continue. The next verse, Quran says, وَكَتَبْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ فِيهَا أَنَّ النَّفْسَ بِالنَّفْسِ وَالْعَيْنَ بِالْعَيْنِ وَالْأَنْفَ بِالْأَنْفِ وَالْأُذْنَ بِالْأُذْنِ وَالسِّنَّ بِالسِّنِّ وَالْجُرُوحُ قِصَاسٌ فَمَنْ تَصَدَّقَ بِهِ فَهُوَ كَفَارَةٌ لَهُ وَمَنْ لَمْ يَحْكُمْ بِمَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهِ that there will be a life for a life, an eye for an eye, an ear for, uh, a nose for a nose, an ear for an ear, a tooth for a tooth. And all of the injuries, qisas, have you know, like, likewise, similar. And whoever they forgave, that will be for them a charity. It will be a kafara for them, meaning there will be expiation for their sins if they did that. And whoever did not judge but rule or judge but whatever Allah revealed, they are al-zalimoon. Al-zalimoon can mean the kuffar, kufr akbar, and it can mean zulum. The lesser zulum of oppression. Both of them are correct. In this ayah, Allah is still talking about the Jews and the Christians and the kuffar. Zulum akbar. Like we say, in the shirk al man adim. The shirk is a great oppression. We don't say suddenly shirk is kufr dun kufr. The shirk is the greatest uh, uh, greatest zulum, greatest oppression. Is kufr akbar. This ayah, even this ayah as well, is still talking about kufr akbar, not talking about kufr asghar. Okay. The next ayah, Allah says, وَقَفَّيْنَا عَلَىٰ آثَارِهِمْ بِعِيسَ بْنِ مَرْيَمْ مُصَدِّقًا لِمَا بَيْنَ يَدَيْهِ مِنَ التَّوْرَاتِ وَآتَيْنَاهُ الْإِنْجِيلِ فِيهِ هُدًى وَنُورٌ وَمُصَدِّقًا لِمَا بَيْنَ يَدَيْهِ مِنَ التَّوْرَاتِ وَهُدًى وَمَوْعِذَةً لِلْمُتَّقِينَ And after that, if we sent Isa, the son of Mary, of Maryam, 
to follow in their footsteps, confirming the truth that they, that they had left in the Torah. And we gave to him as well the Injil, the, the Bible. In it is the guidance and, and the light, confirming the truth in whatever was left of the Torah, and as a guidance and as a preaching for the people who fear Allah. وَلْيَحْكُمْ أَهْلُ الْإِنْجِيلِ بِمَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهُ بِمَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهُ فِيهِ وَمَنْ لَمْ يَحْكُمْ بِمَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهُ فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْفَاسِقُونَ And so let the people of the Bible rule and judge but whatever Allah revealed in the, in the Bible. And whoever did not rule but whatever Allah revealed, they are Al-Fasiqoon. Al-Fasiqoon as well can mean Kafir. Allah mentioned the Kufar are Al-Fasiqoon. And it can mean the Fasiq, which is the sinner. In this ayah is talking about the Christians and the Jews, the Kufr Akbar. And I'll talk about what the ulama said about what these were revealed for as well, inshaAllah. Then Allah continues in this ayat. And he said, وَأَنزَلْنَا إِلَيْكَ الْكِتَابَ بِالْحَقِّ مُصَدِّقًا لِمَا بَيْنَ يَدَيْهِ مِنَ الْكِتَابِ وَمُهَيْمِنًا عَلَيْهِ فَاحْكُمْ بَيْنَهُمْ بِمَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهِ وَلَا تَتَّبِعْ أَهْوَاءَهُمْ عَمَّا جَاءَكِ مِنَ الْحَقِّ لِكُلٍّ جَعَلْنَا مِنْكُمْ شِرْعَةً وَمِنْهَاجًا وَلَوْ شَاءَ اللَّهُ لجعل لَجَعَلَكُمْ أُمَّةً وَاحِدَةً وَلَكِنْ, ليبل ولكن لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ فِي فِي مَا آتَاكُمْ فاستبق فَاسْتَبِقُوا الْخَيْرَاتِ آه إِلَى اللَّهِ مَرْجِعُكُمْ جَمِيعًا فَيُنَبِّئُكُمْ بِمَا كُنْتُمْ فِيهِ تَخْتَلِفُونَ This is, and we review to you the book with the truth, confirming what was left before from the books before. Meaning, we review to you the Qur'an, to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he says, so therefore judge, rule and judge by between them, by whatever Allah revealed. And don't follow their desires. That were the word about what came to you from the truth. To every one of you, to every prophet, we sent to you a sharia, a law and a path. And if Allah wished, we could have made all of you one ummah. But in order to test you in what Allah sent to you, to each of you. So uh, rush to, to, to do the good deeds to Allah, you will return. And you will be uh, everything that you used to do or used to differ will be will be explained to you. Then Allah continued with the next verse, Surah of Ma'ad, verse forty-nine. Wa بَيْنَهُمْ بِمَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهُ وَلَا تَتَّبِعْ أَهْوَاءَهُمْ فَحَذَرْهُمْ أَنْ يَفْتِنُوكَ عَنْ بَعْضِ مَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهُ إِلَيْكَ فَإِنْ تَوَلَّوْا فَعْلَمْ أَنَّ مَا يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ أَنْ يُصِيبَهُمْ بِبَعْضِ الذُّنُوبِهِمْ وَإِنَّ كَثِيرًا مِنَ النَّاسِ لَفَاسِقُونَ He said, so, so rule and judge between them, but whatever Allah revealed. And do not follow your, their desires and be careful in case they put you in fitna to divert you from even part of what Allah revealed. And if they turn away, then know Allah wants to afflict them with some of their sins. And the majority of mankind, they are rebellious, they are sinners. Then finally Allah Subh'ana says in Surah Ma'idah verse 50, أَفَ حُكْمَ الْجَاهِلِيَّةَ يَبْغُونَ وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ مِنَ اللَّهِ حُكْمًا لِقَوْمٍ يُوقِنُونَ Do they seek the hukm of jahiliyyah? And who is better than Allah in legislation for people who have Yaqeen and Iman? So these ayat, they were revealed about the Jews, particularly about Banu Nadir, um, uh, one of the tribes of the Jews, and another one of the tribes, Banu Quraidha or Banu Khaynuqa, one of these two tribes. And uh, their dispute about the murder, the case of Qisas, of life for a life and blood money, or, and another dispute in relation to adultery, the one who is a married adulterer. And they came to the Prophet ﷺ with this dispute. And the Prophet asked them, do you, do, you, do you not have hukum in the Torah for this? Okay, so what is your ruling for this? They said first, we said we blackened the face. He said, is this what is in the Torah? He said, no. What is in the Torah was the stoning to death. But we changed it because of the nobles used to get away with it and the, and the poor used to be stoned. So we said, let us have a law that's equal to all of us. So Allah revealed about them that the one who, does, who rules by Allah, Allah revealed, they are the kuffar. So now, but this ayah has very general meaning as well. Okay, if we take away what is revealed about, and it was revealed about Kufr Akbar, what it also could mean, the verse could also mean what? That anybody who makes a simple, any mistake in his ruling, does he become kafir? This is where we understand that it's something called Kufr dun Kufr. Okay, where well, there is some types of ruling uh, or not ruling by what Allah revealed, that is lesser kufr. Ibn Kathir, uh, he explained that the people who rule are four different types. Okay, there are those who rule by whatever Allah revealed and they don't leave anything out. And they are, of course, the Muslims like, like Al Khulafa al -Rashid, Rashidun, the rightly guided caliphs Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, Ali. Without any doubt, they are Muslims, they are rightly guided, they are on the haqq, and they are rewarded. 
The second is the one who rules but what Allah revealed, but he makes some ijtihad, which is incorrect. Like those who, uh, from Banu Umayyah and Banu Abbas, who made some uh, mistaken uh, uh, ijtihad, believing all the time that they are following what Allah revealed and doing their best uh, in that. But it's something which is open to ijtihad, they made a mistake. They were Muslim and they will, they will be rewarded for the ijtihad even if they were wrong. The third is the one who leaves some matters of his own ruling out, out of hawa and foolishness. Okay. About these, you have different things. From the murji'ah, they used to say, his actions are kufr, but he is, he is mu'min. Okay, and this is the murji'ah. What Ahl al-Sunnah wa Jama'ah say is that this act that they do it is kufr, do no kufr. It is lesser kufr, he's a sinner for doing that. But not does not become, he becomes kafir. Okay, and those who say obviously after that, if he makes it halal in his heart, then he becomes kafir. This becomes like any sin, any kufr, do no kufr. Any sin that you do, adultery, stealing, alcohol, that is a sin. If you just do that, it does not make you kafir. If you make it halal, you think in your heart that it's halal what you're doing, or you say that it's halal, then you become kafir. But then you have the fourth type. Okay, the fourth type. The fourth type is the one who rules by a different law. Okay, a law other than what Allah revealed, like the Jews they did. They make this tabdil. And he's one of two. Either he claims this is the sharia of Allah, and he ruled by it, okay, but it's clearly opposite to what Allah revealed in something known by necessity in Islam. This is kufr bawah, like the Jews, istibdal, exactly what they did, it's kufr akbar. And the second is the one who admits that this is not the sharia of Allah, but he favored another rule instead of the law of Allah. And he is kafir as one. Both of them kuffar. Like the Tatar, Ibn Kathir, he said, Man hakama bi ghayri hukmillah. The one who rules by a law other than the law of Allah. And he said, like the Tatar. Hey, like the Tatar. And I'll give you, inshallah, the full, full quote of this from the beginning. Uh, in a moment, inshallah. He said, like the Tatar, because they used to rule by al yasiq and leaving it with the Quran. Even al yasiq used to contain something from Islam as well. But it used to be a mix of, of opinions and desires and a wise sayings of Genghis Khan, something from the Jews, something from the Christians, something from the Quran. And they made an old book and they used to rule by it. And he said, whoever replaces the Sharia of Allah with this other main man-made Sharia, even though they never said it was from Allah, he said, they are kuffar. And he said, even obliged for us to fight against them. Okay, so I will give you this full quote, inshallah. I'll read it to you. Uh, in full and by the way obviously some people they, they mentioned about this uh, in Tafsir Ibn Kathir they said that no he said يعتقدون, that they believe in fact there's nothing at all no mention of the word يعتقدون, in Tafsir Ibn Kathir of this ayah about the Tatar whatsoever he doesn't mention it at all he may be thinking he may be a mistake he maybe he thought he was, was talking about somebody else uh, another quote by a different scholar okay so this ayah <coughs> I just give you this from Ibn, Ibn Kathir, inshallah. Let's go, it, go directly to the saying of the ulama, this one. Okay. So the ayah. So, وَقَوْلُهُ تَعَالَىٰ أَفَحُكْمَ الْجَاهِلِيَّةِ يَبْغُونَ وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ مِنْ اللَّهِ حُكْمًا لِقَوْمٍ يُوْقِنُونَ He said, the saying of Allah, do, you, do they seek the hukm of jahiliyyah? Okay. And who is better than Allah for uh, legislation for people who have yaqeen, who have, who have, who believe? Allah Ta'ala says, يُنْكِرُ تَعَالَىٰ عَلَىٰ مَنْ خَرَجَ عَنْ حُكْمِ اللَّهِ الْمُحْكَمِ الْمُشْتَمِلَ عَلَىٰ كُلِّ خَيْرِ النَّاهِ عَنْ كُلِّ شَرِّ وَعَذَلَ إِلَىٰ مَا سَوَاهُ مِنَ الْآرَاءِ وَالْأَهْوَاءِ وَالْإِسْتَلَاحَاتِ الَّتِي وَضَعَهَا الرِّجَالِ بِلَا مُسْتَنِدْ مِنْ شَرِيعَةِ اللَّهِ يحكمون به من الضلالات والجهالات مما يضعونها بآرائهم وأهوائهم وكما يحكم به التتار من من السياسات الملكية المأخوذة عن ملكهم جنجس جنجس خان الذي وضع لهم الياسق. So they are continuing after that, inshallah. So he said, Allah rejected those who leave, who go out of the law of Allah that is muhkam, the clear-cut, explicit laws that Allah has legislated, I mean what is known from Islam by necessity. That which combines all that is good, because the sharia is perfect, it's complete. 
How can there be a law that can bring good other than the Sharia of Allah? The Sharia brings all that is good, it compiles it, and forbids all that is evil. And so whoever replaced that with something else from the opinions of the desires or the desires or the terminology of the people that the men they made up with that did not come from the Sharia of Allah, the way the people of Jahiliyyah used to rule by it uh, from the misguidance and the ignorance and as well like what was uh, what they made up from their own opinions and desires and like what the Tatar they used to rule by from the politics of their own kings that they took from Genghis Khan from the leader Genghis Khan and whatever he wrote or made in his book Al Yasiq وهو عبارة عن كتاب مجموع مجموع من أحكام قد 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 اقتبسها من من شرائع شتى. He said, and this is a book that they had compiling from different laws that they quoted from many different laws, different شريعات, different different um, uh, systems of laws. I said من اليهودية والنصرانية والملة الإسلامية وغيرها. He said from from the Jews and from the Christians and even from Islam and other other than them. وفيها كثير من الأحكام أخذها من مجرد نظره وهواه. And and from many أحكام many laws that they took from his from his own opinions and his own desires. فصارت في في بنيه شرعا متبعا يقدمونه على الحكم كتاب بكتاب الله وسنة رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم. فمن فعل ذلك منهم فهو كافر كافر يجب قتاله. And he said, and they took that as a law for their own people, for his own children, and they followed it, and um, they gave it pre pre precedence over the hukum of the Quran and the Sunnah, the, uh, the Sunnah of the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And whoever did that, he is a kafir and is obliged upon us to fight him. حتى يرجعوا إلى حكم الله ورسوله until they return to the حكم of Allah and His Messenger فلا يحكم سواه في في قليل ولا كثير until they know they stopped judging by anything else in even a small matter or a big matter and he said وقال تعالى أف حكم الجاهلية يبغون and Allah said do they seek a judgment of جاهلية أي يبتغون ويريدون Meaning that they seek it and they want it or they, um, I mean, the irada is what you choose. I mean, they cho chose it. وعن, uh, وعن and they made it similar to Allah Ta'ala or they preferred it over the, the hukm of Allah. So this is Ibn Kathir and what he said about it clearly. And he never mentioned anything about believing it is what about the hukm of Allah or not or anything like this. He never claimed anything like that. But the one who, instead of taking the perfect sharia of Allah, he says, no, we will use a different law. That can only mean that he thinks this is the right law, or this is the better law, or this is um, you know, the uh, allowed for you know is acceptable for us to judge by our own opinions instead of the, ju the judgment of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So the one who makes that replacement of all of the laws of Allah, he commits kufr akbar, and that will take him out of the fold of Islam. And nobody ever said anything different. Now, what some people say, and this may be dragging, going on a little bit long. Maybe I want to break it up into uh, other talks, uh, two talks. Okay, so I, I will leave the topic here, inshallah, and after that we will continue and we'll start to talk about now what the ulama said about this ayah and whether or not it refers to kufr akbar, if it was revealed about the greater kufr or the lesser kufr, and what the ulama said about it in terms of kufr dun kufr. Wa akhudaran alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.